Hello and welcome to episode 144 of the Sock Bunny Knit and Fit video podcast. My name is Kimberly, also known as Sock Bunny, and I'm recording in sunny Florida in the United States of America. Today is Friday, December 11th, 2015. I am Sock Bunny on Ravelry, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and I apologize in advance, this is going to be a long one. I haven't recorded it over a month, and I have a ton of stuff to show you guys, so I apologize for the length. And also, I apologize if I sound a little weird, or if I have to cough or sneeze or whatever, I have some little bug that's going around, so... Um, I did want to mention that I do have a Facebook page for my Etsy shop. My Etsy shop is SockFunnyStudios.Etsy.com. I do have a Facebook page, and I have over 200 likes, and I've started doing quarterly drawings. I did a drawing near the beginning of December. Actually, I think it was December 1st. And um, just like on here, the person has 30 days to contact me if they won. So if you are in that group and you liked the page, go over and check to see if you won. Um, if I don't have a winner by, if the person doesn't contact me by January 1st, I'm going to draw another winner. So if you haven't already liked my Facebook page, go ahead and do that. And uh, you can just go to Facebook and search for Sock Bunny Studios, or I will put a link in the description down below here on YouTube, or also in the U, in the Ravelry group in episode 144's thread, I'll put a link there so you can go and like that page and maybe win something. So either way, I'm going to be doing the next, if I, even if I don't, whether or not I do a drawing in January, my next quarterly drawing will be in March. So feel free to hop over there and like my Facebook page. And then I also want to mention I have a Sims channel here on YouTube called Sock Bunny Sims where I play Sims 3, Sims 4, and also Sims City. And I have um, several Let's Plays going on right now, so go check that out. And I'll also link that in the description down below and in the Ravelry group. And in the Etsy shop, Sock Bunny Studios, I have quite a bit of yarn in there. Sock yarn mainly, but I also have some lace weight. But I also uh, uploaded, uh, uploaded or added a couple of new colorways. This one is called Christmas Flower, and I actually did. I believe I dyed this like when I first started dyeing. I had dyed this and I've re-dyed it. This is on my Manly base, which has the little nips or donegals or whatever you want to call them, and it's called um, Manly, and uh, that's the base. It's Christmas Flower. It's a pinkish red, 80% superwash BFL, 20% nylon. And there are a couple, actually I think there's one skein left of this. And then I have a couple of skeins of this one. This is called Christmas Flower. And this is on my um, uh, MCN Merino Cashmere Nylon base, which is called, uh, the base is called Jamie. This is called Shut Your Pie Hole, which is one of my favorite sayings in the whole world, and it makes me laugh every time. So uh, it sort of reminded me, when I was dying, it sort of reminded me of cherry pie filling for some reason. So it is... Shut your pie hole. So there you go. Those are in the uh, sockbunnystudios.etsy.com. That's the shop. And I have a ton of stuff around me to show you guys. So again, I'm going to apologize for it being long. Also, I'm recording on my phone today, so I keep looking in the wrong spot. I need to look over here. And so I'll be stopping the recording occasionally because my phone, I think, only records for 30 minutes and then it stops on its own. So I would rather control where it breaks instead of it just stopping on me. So let's see. Um... Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is the Sock Bunny Retreat Kit. That's the title of this episode, Sock Bunny Retreat Kit. If you're a new viewer, first of all, thank you for joining me. And you may not know that I have a mascot who is actually really the real star of this podcast. His name is John John. He's my bunny that I've had since I was little. Actually, he's going to be 40 years old on Christmas. <laughs> he looks good for his age, right? Hey, people. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hello, ladies. So this is John John. He's the mascot for the podcast. So three of the people who are coming to the Sock Bunny Retreat as vendors got together and made a little kit that you're going to be able to pre-order and either receive it at the kit or they could ship it to you. Uh, you can receive it at the retreat or they will ship it to you after the retreat. So the first thing that is in the kit is, where did it go? Hold on, let me find it. John, John, did you hide it? <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, I had it right in my lap. I'm so, <laughs> I told you I'm a little out of it today. All right, so the first thing is a, a little mini box bag. Little tiny mini box bag. 
The Rainstorm Studios mini box bag is 3 inches by 2 inches by 1 inch. It features the colors of John John's body, vest, and bow tie and comes with a lobster claw clip to attach it to your key ring or knit bag. So it's got John John's body and the green flower matches his vest. The orange actually matches his carrots and on the inside we have pink with white polka dots to match his bow tie. So I will hold him up so you can see that yes, it does match him. You're so cute. So anyway, then uh, next we have four mini skeins of coordinating um, sock yarn in John John colors. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Each skein is five grams or approximately 20 yards each of Daisy Knits Hardy Base, which is 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. And then the last thing that comes in the kit is some stitch markers. I'm going to take them out of their plastic. The Snarky Llama Creations marker set features one large marker with the portrait of John John. from the Sock Bunny logo with a leverback finding as well as four carrot markers that fit up to size 8 needles and these are carrots. All five are backed with pink and white polka dots. Whoops, <laughs> if I turn it around. So all five of them have this on the back. So those three items are in the kit and the kits are going to be $25 and will be available for pre-order. From December 15th through February 29th, they will be delivered to Sock Bunny Retreat attendees at the February Retreat. Anyone not attending the retreat may purchase a kit. However, there will be a $5 charge for shipping, and they will be shipped after the retreat. And I will put both in the down bar down below and um, in the Ravelry group, I will create a separate thread for where you can go on December 15th to order these. So again, December 15th through February 29th of 2016, you can order these cute little kits, and I just think they're fabulous, and thank you ladies so much um, for doing this, and it's just gonna be, it's gonna be an awesome retreat, and John John says thank you. He also says, how you doing? <laughs> Um, we're gonna do today's retreat backwards. I have been doing this podcast for almost four and a half years and I always do the topics almost in the same order. So I was thinking, you know, I need to do the podcast backwards. So we're gonna do it backwards today. So today we're gonna do favorite things, tips and tricks, stash enhancement, fitness, upcoming events, sock binary retreat, finished objects and works in progress, dishcloth along, and charity. <laughs> Because I just got to do things different sometimes. All right, so I got to start at the back of my notes instead of the front. Um, favorite things. All right, I've had this favorite thing for quite a while, and I uh, I have like a list of favorite things that I want to show on the podcast. This has been on the list for quite a while. If you have, if you know me at all, you know that I love Star Trek, and this was gifted to me quite a while ago by Sam from the Knit Run Dig podcast, and also the Knit Run Dig Etsy shop. And her Ravelry name is Stealth Dragon. She gifted me this little miniature um, Star Trek Enterprise. And it lights up. I'll turn it on so you can see. So you can see underneath. It's hard to tell in this light, but there are lights underneath. So this is just a little miniature replica of the Star Trek Enterprise from Star Trek. I love it. I love This is one of my favorite things in the whole world. If the house was on fire, I might run in and come and get it because I love it that much. So thank you, Sam, for gifting that to me ages ago. Okay, so that was um, favorite things. Next backwards subject is tips and tricks. Okay, my tip and trick is um, every year around this time I set knitting goals. I don't always finish all the things that I set out to knit, but I do like to have like a written set of knitting goals. And I'm going to talk next week about most of those knitting goals, but one of the knitting goals that I'm going to do this year is something called Yoss. And it's something that Tammy from the Proverbial Knitter podcast uh, is a member of. I think she, I think she actually runs it. And um, it's Year of Stash Socks. Now, in this group, they try to use 24 skeins of sock yarn throughout the year. And you know, I, I'm pretty sure you don't only have to knit socks. You can knit anything you want, but I'm sure most people do socks. Um, so I'll read what they had in the group. I actually uh, joined the group this morning, and it's uh, it says, it's all about using up the stash. You choose 24 skeins of sock yarn up front, and every month you choose your own pattern or not, 
plain vanilla is fine, and you knit up one of your skeins. Substitutions are allowed, and details are explained in the thread. If socks are not your thing, you are always free to knit what you want and post that month that in the monthly thread. Um, this past year, without even really trying, I did knit 11 pairs of socks. I have a 12th pair that is possible I might finish these before December 31st, so it's possible I'll have 11 or 12 pairs of socks done without even really pushing it. So I don't know if I could do 24. I don't know if you're supposed to do 12 or 24. So I'll have to read the group more, but, um, but I do need to pick out the 24 things of sock yarn, which I'm pretty sure I have, and if I don't have, I'll take some of my own that I've dyed and put them in there, but I have a lot of sock yarn. So I have two bags from the brown bags from this past year that I was pulling a brown bag out every month. So um, I have two of those, and I know I have many, many other skeins of sock yarn, So, which some of those you'll be seeing later in Stash Enhancement. So that is my... Um, tip or trick is to set knitting goals and actually write them down. And so if you have some knitting goals for this year, please go to either the um, YouTube comments and tell me what your knitting goals are this year, or go to the Ravelry group and in uh, episode 144, put what your knitting goals are for this year. It could just be vague, like I want to knit more socks, or it could be like I want specifically want to knit 17 pairs of socks, or it could be, you know, I want to knit these specific items. And I'll talk more next week about, or next episode, about my specific goals other than being in YAS this year. Okay, stash enhancement, quite a bit of stash enhancement, um, and be forewarned, I'm going to be mentioning the Daleks four times in this podcast, <laughs> and if you don't know who the Daleks are, they're the evil bad guys from Doctor Who, and I love them, I'm obsessed with Daleks, so you'll, you're going to see some Dalek, Dalek insanity going on in just a moment. Um, so first, I have um, something that I bought from Desert Vista Dye Works, she is, of course, other than myself. She's my favorite indie dyer, and, you know, I love a lot of indie dyers, but I have to say she's one of my favorites, and she's been dying for four years, and this is called Zombody Lo Loves the Two Knit Lit Chicks. One of my favorite audio podcasts is the Two Knit Lit Chicks. It's a mother-daughter podcasting team, and Nitty Barb watches. Hi, Barb. And um, so I had to get this colorway. I love teal or turquoise, and I just love this colorway. And it is a self-striping. So this will be one of my uh, 24 sock yarns for this upcoming year. And then uh, next, when I was at Universal Studios, when I went on um, earlier in the month, which I'll talk about later, I got myself a Dalek t-shirt. I haven't even let myself wear it because, actually I went on November 11th. Oh my gosh, it's been like a month since, oh my gosh, it's been a month. Oh, anyway, so I got myself a Dalek t-shirt, and it says, Vote No on Daleks, and at the bottom it says, Stop Extermination Today. <laughs> and if you know the Daleks, they say, Exterminate, Exterminate, Exterminate. So I would not even let myself wear it until I showed it to you guys, so I got myself a Dalek t-shirt. And actually, I, I, I earned this t-shirt because they had a thing at Universal where you could watch a TV show, and they would uh, pay you $20. It, was, it took like an hour. They paid me $20 to sit and watch a TV show and then give very detailed opinions about what I thought about the TV show. And um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say which TV show it was, but I'll say that it was a medical show, which I don't watch medical shows, so I was sort of like, I, I'm very squeamish, and so I was, a few times I was like, Egh. and what they did is they get they give you two like buttons to push. You have a, a green button and a red button, and if you like what's going on in the episode, you push the red, I mean the green button. If you didn't like it, you push the red button, and then they had a whole bunch of questions that you typed out the answers to afterwards. So that was pretty fun, and. Um, so I earned $20 that way and immediately spent it on a Dalek t-shirt, so go figure. Um, speaking of Daleks, something I bought, where is it, where is it, it's over here somewhere. I have a ridiculous pile of stuff to show you. Oh my gosh, where did that, oh here it is, it just rolled away. Alright, sorry about that. Uh, this is a Dalek colorway by Desert Vista Dye Works. Yes, I ordered more. More DVD. I had to order this one. It's a Dalek colorway, so... Duh. <laughs> and it's called Rainbow Exterminate. It's a self-striping, and then there's this little gray bit that you could do the um, toes or whatever, or cuff, or whatever you want with that. So, 
Rainbow Exterminate Dalek colorway. Love! Yes, those are what, two times I've mentioned the Dalek so far? I know there's one more. Oh, that's three times. Let's see, t shirt, that. Oh no, there, I have two more times I'll be mentioning the Daleks. Okay, um, next from Sam, who is Knit Run Dig. She was actually in town um, around, actually Thanksgiving week uh, in November. She was in town. Um, she lives in England. And so she was in St. Petersburg. So we were able to, uh, Joe and Sarah and Rachel and I, were able to have lunch with Sam and her husband, Mark, who is, they're both, Sam and Mark are both just super smart and super, super nice. So we had lunch with them and she gifted to me, um, something, some things from her retreat. She actually had a retreat in October in Edinburgh, Scotland. I so wish I could have gone to that. Uh, so she gifted to me some Ginger Twist Studio yarn, India. Indie Vintage Inspired Yarn Shop in Edinburgh, Scotland. Oh, I so, so, so hope someday I can visit. And yes, it's that bright. <laughs> and there's the business card. And then she also gifted to me, Sam did, a uh, needle protector from Slip Stitched Studios. And there's the card for that. And it has tortoises all over it. <laughs> so this is a needle protector to protect your needles when you're working on a project. It has tortoises all over it from Doctor Who. So there you go. Love that. So thank you, Sam, again for that. And then um, I have that my friend um, Dale, Girl Dale, gifted to me something that she won. It's a Dalek project bag, and it's got Daleks all over it. And this is from SoFlo, S-E-W-F-L-O. And this has an orange Dalek and a yellow Dalek. And I hate yellow, and Dale loves yellow. And she hates orange, and I love orange. So I told her that the orange Dalek is shooting the yellow Dalek. <laughs> if we look at it right side up. Ah, yes, I mean like that. So thank you, Girl Tail, for that. We'll see, be seeing that fabric again in a little bit. And then um, my friend Christine, who is Willow Rose, who is Rainstorm Studios, she, is this still recording? Yes, it is. Okay, who I scared myself. She gifted me some square collage needles because she has them and didn't like them. I love square needles. They're my favorite. Square needles are the bomb. So she gifted me two uh, collage square needles. They are in size zeros. And what are these? Which are these? These are size 1, 2.25 millimeters. So 2.0 millimeters or zeros and ones, which are 2.25 millimeters. And I am definitely looking forward to using these. Thank you, Christine. And then I have, this is something that Christine gifted to me a long time ago, and I forgot to show it on here. This is one of the prototypes for the little, uh, for something you're going to see later. No, wait, I already showed it. Yeah, the, the John John um, kit. This was a prototype, so she gifted that to me. And you can see on the inside it is white with black polka dots. And then Girl Dale gifted to me some stitch markers that she had made a while back in yellow and blue, her favorite colors. So thank you guys for those. We had a girls' uh, weekend away back in September, and they gifted me those items. So. That is it, I think. Let me double check. Yes, okay, so I'm going to stop the recording and restart it so that uh, the breaks will be in good spots on the podcast. Okay, the next segment is fitness. Every month in the Sock Bunny group, we have a fitness along. Any day that you have at least 30 consecutive minutes of exercise or 10,000 steps on your pedometer, you can do one entry per person per day, and the winner once a month gets to choose up to a $10 giftable pattern on Ravelry. So the October winner and the November winner, I'm announcing both of them, and I swear I did not cheat. This is really cool. So I actually drew the winners on two separate days. The winners for both months were number 166. What are the astronomical chances of that? Then, on top of that, one winner is named Catherine and one winner is named Kathy. What are the chances of that? It's very, very crazy. So, it, the October winner, for October we had 20 participants and the winner was number 166, who is a runner bean, who is Catherine in Ireland. So congratulations. And then the November winner is, um, well, 
excuse me, we had 21 participants. The winner, oh my gosh, sorry. The winner is number 166, Mountain Pearl, who is Kathy in Colorado. So both of you, congratulations. Contact me. You could choose um, up to one, up to $10 in patterns, um, U.S. dollars on Ravelry. It is, um, uh, it could be one $10 pattern or two $5 patterns or ten uh, $1 patterns or however you want to do it. You can break it down. So contact me, Sock Bunny, on Ravelry and let me know what you want. And um, speaking of fitness, I have a couple of things to talk about and show you. Um, on November 11th, I did go to Universal, Universal Studios. That's when I got that t-shirt. And I did my personal record number of steps in one day. I did 26,000 steps, which I can't remember how many miles that is. Uh, but that's my personal record, 26,000. My previous record had been 25,000 one day when I went to uh, Magic Kingdom at Disney World. So I am super excited about that. And then um, I am still doing Whole30. I started um, September 26th, I think it was. So my uh, way of doing Whole30 is I finished, of course, the 30 days, but I'm still not eating sugar. So it's been almost three months of not eating sugar, and I don't eat things that I know I'm allergic to. I have found out that I am deathly allergic to soy. <laughs> so I think in the last podcast I had said that I was going to be reintroducing soy. It is really, really, it's, it's actually my most uh, allergic thing that I could possibly eat so far. The only thing I haven't reintroduced yet is peanuts. Um, everything else... Uh, so far, okay, so milk, I can't eat or drink milk, which also means cheese and yogurt and all that kind of stuff because I'm allergic to that. I can't have um, beans like black beans or anything like that, and soy makes me super sick. And so I'll be talking about that again in a minute, but um, I've lost, uh, I haven't weighed myself actually in a couple of weeks, but the last time I weighed myself, I was down 15 pounds. So I lost 12 pounds in the first 30 days, and then I've lost a couple more pounds since then. So I'm very, very happy with that. And um, I haven't been super motivated by my Fitbit recently. I think I'm just sort of having Fitbit burnout right now. So I'm still wearing it, but I'm not like pushing myself to get the steps. I've been doing a lot of yoga and um, a lot of running, um, doing walk, run intervals and stuff like that. So speaking of walking and running, I uh, did a couple of races recently, and I want to show you the cool t-shirts I got. Uh, the first one is a turkey trot, and a turkey trot, if you don't live in the United States, you might not even know what that is, but on Thanksgiving, a lot of places have races. It could be a one-mile race. They're mostly fun runs. It could be a 5K, whatever. Um, so I did the turkey trot here in Tampa on Thanksgiving morning. This race started at 7 o'clock in the morning. I was not happy about that. This was Sarah's idea, my older daughter. She was home for Thanksgiving. She's 23 and she wanted to do a turkey trot. So she did it with me and with Joe and Rachel stayed home and stayed in bed. <laughs> She's 21 and, and smarter than the rest of us evidently. So we did the turkey trot. Oh, I did get a medal for that one. So here's the medal for that race. And I actually was super sick because when I went to Universal Studios on the 11th, I caught a cold and I was so, so sick. But I didn't think I would run any of that race, but I actually ran about a third of it. So I was pretty, pretty surprised. And then I did, um, okay, then this past Sunday, which was December 6th, I was supposed to do a tinsel, uh, what is it called? Oh my gosh a uh, tinsel run, yeah, tinsel run, which is a Christmas run. It was a fun run on Sunday morning. Um, somehow the previous day I had eaten something I didn't realize had soy in it or had been um, processed on the same uh, machines that processed soy. I actually ate some canned salmon that did not say it had soy in it, but it obviously had soy because I was so sick Sunday morning when I woke up. I couldn't even walk to the car, much less do a race. So Joe went to the race without me and Joe at the race broke his foot yes he stepped off the sidewalk funny at the beginning of the race and broke his foot so now he's in a uh, walking walking boot so anyway he has to wear it like six to eight weeks minimum but I did get a cool t-shirt because uh, I had pr I had already picked up the t-shirts the prior prior Friday uh, I ran the race virtually the following Tuesday so this past Tuesday I did uh, walk run intervals for the race so I did um, finish the 5k myself here's the cool t-shirt for that and it's for a running group that I'm a member of on uh, Facebook called uh, run Tampa 
So they had a very, uh, I guess it was fun. I saw pictures. People were dressed up in holiday outfits and stuff like that, which was cool. So that is what is going on with that. Uh, my fitness poster that I showed in the last episode, remember that big orange fitness poster? I actually ripped it up today <laughs> because I've been sick off and on, which I know is not an excuse, but it wasn't motivating me. Um, and it was making me feel bad and anything that makes you feel bad and doesn't motivate you, you don't need it in your life. So it was making me feel guilty that I wasn't doing everything I needed to be doing. So I just ripped it up and threw it away. And I mean, I'm obviously still exercising. I'm obviously eating healthy and doing great fitness wise. So I don't need the poster to motivate me right now. That's totally fine. I ripped it up. It's in the garbage. So there you go. Um, and I think that's all for fitness. Upcoming events. Natopia is going to be April 13th through the 24th in Michigan with Tina, who is blooming there of the Knitting Blooms podcast. And I'm super excited about that. I've never been to Michigan before. And um, I'm going to freeze. That's all we have to say. I'm a Florida girl. It's still uh, approximately 80 degrees here uh, today in uh, Florida. I don't know what that is Celsius, but um, it's December 11th and it is still very warm here. I'm wearing shorts right now. Um, okay, let's talk briefly about the Sock Bunny Retreat. That's going to be February 4th through the 6th, 2016. All the vendor slots are full. It, the five vendors all have Etsy shops. So our Etsy shops are Daisy Knits, Rainstorm Studios, Bead Sisters, Slap Your Llama, and Sock Bunny Studios. So far we have 15 paid attendees and a few people who have told me that they are coming but haven't paid yet. The deadline to pay and register is December 31st. So we've got... 20 days left to sign up for that and um, I am going to open the Saturday market which will be from 2 to 4 on Saturday to anybody who wants to come and there's no charge to come and shop at the five different vendors. Um, next year's retreat I might have more vendors depending on demand. If a lot of people come to the Saturday vendor thing I might have more vendors. If it's only going to be the retreat attendees I think five is a good number because you know I want people I want it to be worth it for somebody to come and vend and for them you know if you have 20 people vending and you only have 15 attendees then I don't think it'd be worth it for somebody so that's why I'm keeping the vendor number so low but you know as this retreat grows we might add more vendor slots in in the future so right now um, like I said Saturday market it will be from 2 to 4 on that Saturday which is February 6th and during that retreat I will be turning 50 I know I only look 21 but I'm Believe it or not, I'm going to be 50. It's hard to believe. Um, so let's go ahead and pause the uh, recording again so we can have a good break. Okay, now we're going to talk about works in progress and finished objects. I've got a couple of works in progress. The first one is um, Sock Yarn by West Yorkshire Spinners. This sock yarn has sort of gone viral. Um, you've probably seen a lot of people knit the blue tick colorway, which I did order that, but I am currently knitting the bullfinch colorway, I believe is what this is called. It's red and light gray and dark gray. And I'm not a fan of gray, but I love red and gray. Oh, I'm wearing gray today. This will totally match. So. I cast these on when Sarah was home because Sarah likes to um, shop, but she takes forever to make up her mind. So we went to the mall on Monday after Thanksgiving, and I had to have something to knit on while we were there. So this is very nice yarn. I was worried that it was going to be super scratchy because I would consider this to be a workhorse yarn, but it is not scratchy, and it's lovely to knit with. It's actually pretty soft. Um, very nice to knit with. I'm super happy with the yarn. I'm, I haven't had any knots yet, knock on wood. Um, I don't think I'm going to because I've already wound it into a cake and I had, didn't see any knots when I was winding it. So I'm super happy. I will be ordering more of this. Like I said, I already have the blue tit, which is blue and yellow. They have another colorway, which was like green and orange. I don't know what the bird name was for that, but I'm going to be ordering it for sure. And that is in my Rainstorm Studios bucket bag. And, oh, Christine, I forgot to tell you, um, Christine is the person who made this bag. When I was at the mall walking around with Sarah, we were in a store, I think it was the Limited, but the lady who worked there told me she, like, freaked out and had to find out where I got this bag, so I gave her your information. So there you go. I love this bag. It's perfect for walking around the mall because you can hang this on your arm and then knit. So 
perfect, perfect bag for that. I love this. Plus, it's got, you know, superhero sayings on it, like Batman-type sayings. And Batman was my first husband. Remember that. When I was three, I was married to him. So there you go. Uh, let's see. And then my other one, you haven't even seen this project, and it's almost done. It's that addict. It's my obsession. I cannot, I cannot put this down. I might be finishing this today. So this is some yarn from Desert Vista Dye Works. It is her logo colorway, her Desert Vista Dye Works logo. It's a gradiently dyed thing, and of course I'm in the middle of a row, but I'm knitting the TGV. It's just shawl TGV high speed knitting. It's a pattern on Ravelry, and it, this yarn has two different shades of orange, and then like a burgundy or a maroon, and then two shades of light blue, and then one shade of dark blue. And you basically weigh, for this shawl pattern, you weigh yarn, use half of it for the top part, and it's a crescent. And this is really long. I can't even show the whole thing on here. That's how big this is. So it's a crescent, and then the bottom half of it is knit to pearl to ribbing. And what I'm doing for this is a little tip. I know I've shared this tip before, but if you don't haven't ever heard this, um, when you get down to this much and you have a project this big, you're like, I don't even know if I have enough left to bind off. So what I do is after at the end of each row, I weigh it, and then I know how much approximately how much each row is taking, and then I'll know when I have enough left to do the bind off, and I don't have to play what they call yarn chicken. <laughs> So I am loving this project. I think I love orange so much, and I just love the orange and blue together, and the burgundy in the middle. I think is just a perfect touch. So, and I actually won this yarn. Um, she's been dyeing yarn for four years, and she had a contest recently, and I won a twenty-five dollar gift certificate to her shop. So I spent it on this, and I love it. I I'm telling you, I just got this yarn recently, and I've already. Since my last podcast, which is about a month ago, I've actually almost already finished this. That's how much I've been working on it. So those are my only two works of progress, but I have a lot of finished objects. First, I want to say I frogged a project. I don't know if you remember back in the summer. This is, I don't think I only even showed it once. Um, my May socks, my May socks, that I actually took some sock yarn and I was making a pink and green granny square scarf. I don't like it. It's going to be frogged, so that project is no more. Um, September socks. These are, where did I put my finished objects? I have so many things around me right now. Here it is. Um, this is my um, September socks. And the reason I'm calling them September socks, if you're a new viewer, um, at the beginning of the year, I put 12 balls of sock yarn into um, brown bags. And I, every month I was drawing out, well, almost every month I was drawing out a sock yarn and knitting socks. So this is um, trekking sock yarn and this is a workhorse yarn it is it's a little scratchy but it's a very sturdy yarn I've knit other socks with this uh, yarn before and I really really like it so these are my September socks they're just plain vanilla socks and they are done and I love them and uh, I think I might have already mentioned I can't remember if I said it but I yeah I think I said I already knit um, 11 pairs of socks this year so that uh, those West Yorkshire spinner socks would be my 12th pair if I finish them by the end of the month which is totally possible so those are my uh, September socks. Um, I did crochet a couple of things. The first is I made a doily for Rachel's boyfriend's parents. So Rachel's boyfriend's name is Thomas. His parents are super, super nice. They do a whole bunch of stuff for her and I wanted to give them something nice. So I crocheted this for them. It's a doily and it's in a book that is the same age as Rachel. It's Magic Crochet. It's from um, August, I think, August of 1994. Rachel was born in 1994. So, yeah, this book is 21 years old, this magazine. But, anyway, so I knit this one. It's called Beaming. This is the one that I made. And it's going to be hard to show it on here because it's rather large and I can't hold up the whole thing at once. But this is it. I haven't woven in the ends yet, obviously. Actually, let me... Let me do this, see if I can hold it up. There you go. You can sort of see it there. So this took me probably a couple of weeks to make. Oh, several weeks, actually. And it's funny because we were over there on Thanksgiving, and um, I guess I had not paid much attention or 
or maybe subconsciously noticed that she actually had some other doilies. Um, Thomas's mom had some other doilies there, and I asked her about them, and her mom had made them for her. So I think they will like this gift as a Christmas gift. And I also made, which, oh, where did I put it? Oh, here it is. Um, I have a, a crocheted Christmas snowflake on my tree that I wanted to make, but I couldn't find the pattern online, and it's I've had it forever. Probably my mom made it. So um, I deconstructed it and I sort of followed it. I didn't follow it exactly because I didn't like count how many chains they did in between each section or whatever. But I wanted a snowflake that looked like a star. So I'm going to be making several of these through this uh, next year um, just as a little side project. Um, maybe to put on my tree next year or maybe to give as a gift next year. So I'm super happy with that. And what is next? Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm doing the podcast backwards today, people. Um, I made a Dalek hat for my friend Michelle. I, um, uh, she had asked me for a hat in specific color, so I dyed the yarn. It's pink and purple. I did post pictures on Instagram, and also um, in my Ravelry project page, there should be pictures of that. And there are, yes, there are. And so it's the hat is called Insulate. It's a free pattern on Ravelry, and it's got Daleks all around it. And I'll be knitting it again in the near future, so you will be seeing that again. I also made a whole bunch of dishcloths for our dishcloth along. And I made these for, for Thomas's parents to give them on Thanksgiving, but I forgot them because I'm an airhead. <laughs> So these do look like Christmas colors, but his fam Thomas's family is actually from Mexico. This is a color that's a Mexican flag. <laughs> so I'm calling these Mexican flag dishcloths, not Christmas dishcloths. So this one I crocheted, and it is I just did knit, uh, single crochets through the back loop of each stitch. And then this one is my favorite dishcloth pattern of all time. It's the Daryl Waltrip dishcloth pattern, and it's really good. It's got slip stitches. You slip stitches with yarn in front. And it is great for variegated. And then I did just a plain knit cloth. And then I did a grandmother's favorite. And it's funny how this same exact yarn can look so different in four different cloths. It's just amazing. And then I did make some other cloths. This first one I'm keeping for myself because I did a really terrible job on it. Um, the rest of them I haven't woven in the ends yet. But this one, I was carrying the colors up the side and I did a terrible job. So I'll keep this one. It'll still wash dishes. But I decided to um, make the rest of these cloths using scraps. So uh, this one is using two different colorways and I just sort of blended them together. Just plain knitting. This one's a grandmother's favorite using some scraps. And these will go to Thomas's parents as a Christmas gift because they did ask for more dishcloths. And this one I just uh, did plain knitting and then I did a few rows of seed stitch here to practice my continental. Oh, and I forgot to mention the TGV shawl that I am doing. I'm knitting that and uh, that whole thing in continental knitting uh, to practice my continental because I'm a thrower generally. And then this is another scrap cloth with just some random, uh, I just randomly changed in between just plain rows of knitting and um, seed stitch which is knit one purl one and I did this one continental and then another scrap cloth so these will be going to Thomas's parents for uh, Christmas um, let's see oh and I also made for where is it my um, older daughter is a Catholic missionary their official titles are they don't I call them Catholic missionaries their official title is consecrated women of Regnum Christi and they are just like nuns except they don't call themselves nuns but they do take vows of poverty chastity and obedience I'll be talking about them again later in the charity section but they um, uh, her friend Michelle her friend okay Sarah's one of Sarah's consecrated friends who used to teach at the school in Rhode Island asked for um, a purple scarf and I finished the scarf and hat and I showed them last time I also made her mittens and I really really need to get these in the mail that's the um, fried chicken mittens they're on uh, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes and it's the blackberry colorway it's a very dark purple the sun is finally starting to go down it was so super bright in here earlier um, let's see. And then last but not least, I finished my October socks. 
and they are by uh, Lion Brand Yarn. I bought the yarn at Joann's, I believe. It's another workhorse yarn that is just very rough, but I'm sure they'll be awesome to wear. This yarn is super rough. So what I did is for this one, I purled the green stitches. And what that means is when I had a green stitch on my left hand needle, instead of knitting into it, I purled into it. And I have, I did this a long time ago, many, many years ago, um, with this other sock yarn. So I pulled them out to show you. This is Drops Fable. If you'll remember over the summer, I had knit some guacamole colored socks in this yarn. And so, um, sort of hard to tell, but I had also purled the green stitches on these socks. There we go. On this side, you can see it better. It just gives it a little pop of color. <clears throat> so again, those are my October socks by Lion Brand Yarn. I do love them. They are very pretty. Must have, I must say they are pretty. There we go. All right. So that is finished objects. Um, let's talk again about the dishcloth along. We have a dishcloth along that's been going on October, November, and December. And you can knit, crochet, or weave the dishcloths. The rules are all in the Sock Bunny group on Ravelry. And the prizes are going to be from me, any $5 or less dishcloth or dish towel giftable pattern. And I'm going to draw two winners for that. Girl Dale is donating three sets of handmade stitch markers. Tigger Girl is donating a book called 52 Weeks of Dish Cloths by Knit Picks. Sundaisy 920 is donating any $10 giftable Ravelry pattern of your choice and you can mix and match. And Nula Bula is donating your choice of yarn from her awesome Etsy shop at uh, dharmadyeworks.etsy.com. So thank you guys for donating and I have been loving the dishcloth finished object thread. You need to have them in there by December 31st. On January 1st I'll close the thread and on the first episode in January I will announce the winners. We did receive um, three different donations for the um, for retreat door prizes. I want to show those really quick. Uh, let's see. The first one is a book from, donated by Sarah in Houston and it's Knitting Socks with Hand Painted Yarn, which is an awesome sock yarn book. So thank you, Sarah, for donating that. And then we have um, to match the um, bag that I showed you that Girl Dale gifted to me. She also won a little notions pouch. So she's giving that away, and it has an orange Dalek. So every time you use this, you could think of me and the orange Dalek. So that's another door prize from So Flow, but Dale, Girl Dale won it and donated it. So thank you, Girl Dale. That's going to be a door prize. And then next, we have fabulous, fabulous prizes. I guess I don't have to leave that in there. We have fabulous prizes that were donated very, very generously by Melissa at BCY, or Very Colorful Yarnings. Here's her card. It's um, very colorful yarning at uh, dot etsy dot com, or you can go to uh, Facebook and find her on there. Very colorful yarning, and she donated three things. The first of which, oh, I love, I love all three of them actually, but this one I love. It's a um, sock blank, and I think this will be so awesome for a um, gradient shawl. How cool would this be, right? So this is the first thing. This is going to be a door prize at the retreat. And I'm not showing you everything that's all the door prizes because some of the door prizes I'm buying separately and um, I want there to be some surprises at the retreat. So if you have something you want to donate, it could be a pattern. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be knitting related. Uh, you could donate that. And then she sent two more things, which I love both of them. This one is green and purple and orange self-striping sock yarn fabulous she's a really really awesome dyer really awesome dyer this one is hard to tell but it's actually navy um, a, a purplish navy and orange and white and this looks like Denver Broncos colors almost so that makes my bunny John John very happy so thank you Michelle for donating those they are I mean Melissa sorry 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 Melissa uh, for donating those. They are fabulous. So I'm super, super happy about that. So those are retreat door prizes. And the last topic we're going to talk about is charity. So 
in the sock bunny group I've mentioned this before I do have a thread uh, many of you had asked if uh, uh, Sarah and the other Catholic missionaries needed anything knitted or crocheted I got a list um, from Sarah through there's various um, communities in the United States where they live there's also some in other countries but these are the US communities and they are um, there are several items that need need to be done like um, mittens and socks and stuff like that and so uh, thank you to everybody who's already signed up there are more slots available I think about half of them have been taken so if you want to knit or crochet for a uh, Catholic missionary look in the Ravelry group and you can uh, sign up for that so I think that is it did I have anything else yes I think that was it so don't forget to um, just so I, uh, put your prayer requests in the prayer request thread. Don't forget to go check out the Facebook group and like that to, for a chance to win prizes. Also, um, I can't remember if I said in the Ravelry group when we get to 1,500 members, I'll have another prize drawing, and we're at 1,300 and something members right now. So if you haven't signed up for the Ravelry group, please do. And again, thank you. If you're a new viewer, thank you so much. If you're a returning viewer, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope you have a great day, and keep on crafting. Bye!